the whole country has followed uh, with interest and with love the battle that your family has gone through in recent times with Jim fighting cancer and one of the most uh, beloved figures in recent pro football memory. What, what made you decide to put it in a book to begin with? Well, really, after watching my dad struggle through cancer and watching my brother years and years ago struggle through crab A disease, I knew that we had a story that needed to be shared. And not because it's the Kelly story, but because we can encourage someone else, inspire someone else to live a courageous and fearless life, regardless of their own circumstance. Because, as you know, we all have our own stories, our own struggles. And so this was just my way of sharing my heart and hopefully encouraging someone who's going through their own trial. At, at any point, when obviously what, what you went through with your brother and then your father, how much was your faith really tested? It was definitely tested, but I think ultimately it was strengthened as a result of everything that we've been through. Obviously, there have been times where I've asked God why, but... At the end of the day, I choose to trust him with what I don't know. And so ultimately, watching my dad go through cancer, my faith has been strengthened because I've had to rely on the strength of God rather than rely on my own strength. We always think about, you know, hearing people's support, right? Now, this is your dad, right? So we all know, Jim, what does it actually mean to get all of the different, what must have been thousands, if not millions, of people connecting with you one way or another during his illness? It's truly indescribable and very very humbling obviously he's just my dad and i don't really see the celebrity status until i see all of these people rallying behind us but it's a humbling experience to know that people all over the world are praying for my dad and our family going through this struggle and so it's so encouraging and those were the things that really got us through when he was in new york what became to you one of the more inspirational, maybe a moment, maybe, maybe something that brought you some clarity to how inspirational this whole story was. I think just when he was in New York and then when he came home to Buffalo and how just being in Buffalo, the whole atmosphere, because we knew that the fans were in Buffalo. We knew our family was in Buffalo. Coming home to Buffalo changed everything. And to hear the responses of the fans once he was home, was incredible and I think that really changed it all and gave me a new perspective on the people the family that surrounds surrounds us during the hardest times at the draft when you came came out and announced the draft pick of the Buffalo Bills and the crowd in Chicago stood um you know it was, it was one of those goosebumps kind of moments yeah. for all of us so I'd like to ask you a similar question to the one I asked Aaron which is you know I always wonder people always say oh the support of everyone out there meant so much to yeah. me you know, you're alone in a room and you're fighting the way you're fighting. How aware are you of all that is out there? How do you, how are you made aware of it? And in what specific ways does it really help you? You know what? Um, that moment um, was hard. Not so much hard, but it was so enjoyable because I knew my daughter was there with me. I knew my wife was there and I knew where I was because I was reminded by my wife that uh, a year ago that day, I was in the hospital not knowing if I was gonna see this year. And just to know that there are so many people out there, especially walking out with Roger, I wasn't sure what to expect, to be honest with you. <laughs> but uh, no, Roger's one of my best friends. He's awesome. But uh, it's in, it's hard to explain because so many people have come up to me and said what an inspiration I am to them. And by them telling me that, that makes me want to even fight more because, to be honest with you guys, sometimes it gets tiresome. I, I, you know, I don't want to be the spotlight. I want to just be able to make a difference. But the more people that have come up to me and explained how it's an inspiration to their son or their daughter or their grandparents are going through chemo to keep to keep fighting. And we know what we've been together as a family with my son and then the four Super Bowls and then my cancer. And there comes a period in your life where you say, you know, enough's enough. And, you know, when is it going to ever give up? You know, when when am I going to wake up one day and feel good? And But I keep my faith through it all. But the thing is, the bottom line is, if I'm inspiring other people, I want them to know they're inspiring me to keep that fight going. And, and you know, a anybody who, who deals with cancer, there, there's no wrong way. If, if, you if you all chose to close ranks and keep yeah. it to yourself, there, there's absolutely that's your choice and nothing wrong with it. But you did choose to, to make this public. So, Aaron, when you're writing this book and you're writing 
some of the emotional things that you are. How difficult was that? I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of tears shed through this. And, and how difficult was it to write some of those emotional moments? It was very difficult during the process because it was as if I was reliving every moment again, having to write it down and then reread it and reread it again. It was reliving those deep moments that I hadn't shared before. And so it, although it was hard, it was also such a blessing to be reminded of what God did in the midst of my dad struggled with cancer. You know, Jim, all of us here through the V Foundation and other ways have uh, have met with and talked to and dealt with a lot of people who've been through cancer. And many of them, I, I can't say all, but I feel like the overwhelming majority say that when you face your mortality in the way that you that you must, when a doctor says to you, you have cancer, that it changes in some ways your priorities for the better. Did you find that? And, and if so, how? How did it change your priorities? Well, it did because I know the old cliche, you live each and every day to its fullest, but that's that's what I really expected because at the beginning, I did not know how bad it was. I just thought like we all do, Mike, when you play, uh, you, you fall down, you get up, you'll be all right. And when I heard I had cancer, I thought, okay, I'll go through my treatments. Mm -hmm. I'll go through my chemo, radiation. I had my surgery. Boom, I'll be all right. But then you start really thinking and, and wanting to spend quality time with the people that you really love and really care about. And that's when my family rallied around me because every single time they came into my hospital room, they never walked in with a frown on their face. They walked in with an attitude that they were going to make my day better by their presence in my room. And that wasn't just my daughters, my wife, uh, my brothers. It was friends that would come to the hospital. And now I started thinking about all the other people that have really supported me in all the letters and cards. So I try, I mean, I can't write back everybody, but I pick certain people out that really touches my heart to make a difference for them. And I will continue to do that. And the fight that I had, it all started with a little boy named Hunter. I saw each and every day the struggles that he had, you know, gasping for every breath that he had. And then, of course, I look back on and say, man, I don't have it hard. He's the one to suffer, but I learned so much through him to be strong and to make sure that I do live each day to its fullest. And trust me, I do. I love my, I love being around my family. I love every moment and uh, I will cherish 